Amen. You are welcome. God bless you. So tonight, we know what the deal is. We're just going to uh, recap what we studied over the year. Uh, you no know, profound studies we've done uh, from the book of Daniel uh, through the Minor Prophets uh, up until the last book of uh, the Minor Prophets, Malachi. And we've all done greatly and uh, wonderfully through, throughout the study. And today, uh, we want to recap, like I, I um, requested or I said, the assignment was given that we today we want to hear the summary or the sum totality of what God has been saying to the children of Israel, to his children, since uh, our studies. There is something that is reoccurring, that is the focus purpose of God's dealing with his people from Daniel to Malachi. What did you gain from these studies? How has what you learned changed or impacted your life? Also, I want to hear your testimonies of what God has done for you in throughout the year 2021 up until this time. So at this point, we are going to um, call on who do we call for? Let's call on Brother Arnold to go first. To lead the way. You know, they say ladies first, but you know, God created man first. So I know, lead the way so that the ladies can follow. <laughs> In the books, Daniel and Malachi, they basically talk about God's mercy, mercy and judgment. In the book of Daniel, God shows his mercy and love to Daniel in the lion's den. He also shows his mercy to Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego when they get thrown into the fiery furnace. God also shows his mercy to the people of Nineveh when they turn to him. The books of Daniel and Malachi show us that God will accept and have mercy on us if we, if we sincerely turn to him and that, and that he will never leave us if we don't leave him. These books show us that God warns us, warns us before he lets, us, he lets out his wrath by sending prophets to the people. These books also help us understand that God is a just God. When God sends his prophets, he lets the people know their sins and that they need to repent. Some of these books talk about the day of the Lord and how the wicked will be doomed, but they also talk about the salvation and victory of God's children. Um, and they also talk about how if you, judgment will come eventually, whether on earth or after death, if you don't turn to God. And uh, that was my summary. And my uh, testimony is, I want to thank God this year because uh, he saved me from uh, masturbation and porn. And I want to thank God for Pastor Cliff because he really helped me too. And uh, at first I confessed, but and then I, I went back to it, but and then I confessed again and now I don't do it anymore. So I want to thank God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's a powerful, powerful, powerful testimony. The Lord bless you. The Lord who has saved you from pornography and masturbation, may he keep you all through your days that you will never fall back to such evil in Jesus' name. And uh, also we thank God for what you have um, um, brought to the table in the summary or uh, what's the focus view or for focus point of God uh, in dealing with uh, the children of Israel from the book of Daniel to Malachi. Your, your highland points where that God uh, was speaking of God's mercy and judgment and that if we repent genuinely, the word there genuinely, that God will show mercy. And uh, we, that, that is uh, the key point uh, I got from what your, you know, your focus uh, um, lesson or lesson points were. And we thank God for that powerful testimony. So please also, um, just like as our brother said, for anybody who is struggling with anything sinful, please don't die in silence. Call for help. Send festers in darkness. And when you seek help, you will get uh, help. The Bible says, "Let it, if we knock, we seek, we'll find. So please don't struggle with sin alone call for help and see how we can help you to make sure you overcome it. You can hear the testimony of um, Arnold and see that it is very possible for someone to live a sinful life, for someone to come out from whatsoever sin 
the devil has laden you with, you seek for help and follow the instructions you're giving and you'll be delivered in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. May the Lord bless you, um, Arnold, and keep you in perfect peace and holiness in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So we are going to thank you so much. Let us go to uh, this man. Let's pick a lady. Let's go to our sister, Adese. Let's hear from her. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In summary of from Daniel to Malachi, we learned that the children of Israel were not constant in their love for God. They would backslide and forget God, the God who brought their fathers out of Egypt. And as we have read these stories of the constant backsliding of Israel, it caused me to question, why do we sin when God has blessed us so richly? This sinfulness, however, did not go unpunished. God punished them and sometimes even refused to answer their prayers. Israel's cattle have died, famine spread, and they were delivered into the hands of the Babylonians. In all this, God, ever so merciful, forgave the children of Israel after, they saw that, after he saw that they were truly repented. From this, I learned that God punishes people to correct them because he loves them. For God, for whom God loveth, he chasteneth. I learned that when I am rebuked, it is not because God is a wicked and mean God, but it is for my benefit, and that when I repent, God is sure to forgive me. However, God will not be mocked. I should not repent just to turn around and sin again, but should, should, but should repent with a broken and contrite spirit. Though we have read about many minor prophets, we have surely reaped many mighty lessons. And my testimony is that from the year of 2021 is that um, around September, I got COVID-19 and I got really, really sick. I was very, very weak so that like walking up the stairs tired me out. I had to lay down and even laying down hurt it wasn't comfortable and I wasn't comfortable in like any position but I thank God for how he has delivered me and now how I am well now and I'm very energetic and praise the Lord hallelujah we thank God for the healing we thank God for his protection all speaks to us that the word of God is true that God says he heals his children and your, uh, your testimony shows to that, affirms God's word that he heals his children. Many has COVID and they died, but you had and you survived. It's all to the glory of God. Thank God for what he has done. And also, coming to your summary, um, your key highlight points were that, you know, the constant backsliding of the children of God, which is the same thing we see in our time. The constant backsliding of the children of God and God, how God is not happy about this and he said god visits his children with what with punishments and with rebukes which is a show of god's love because he wants to save us not because he hates us so when he comes with judgment and with rebukes it's because he wants us to turn from that evil and be saved so so it is when god rebukes us through our teachers through our parents through whoever through our pastors it is out of love that we may be saved, that we may turn to the light and not be damned at last. And we've learned, seen from what, as Jesus said, talked about the backsliding. So we've seen that God is not pleased with that. What that tells us is that we should not backslide like the children of Israel. God wants consistency. God wants those who move forward with him, not those who draw back. He says for those who draw back, his soul is not pleased with them. Thank you so much, Adese. God bless you for that meaningful contribution. More grace in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. So at this point, uh, let's call on Kehinde from New York to share with us. Mm. So, yeah. so what I said was that the focus of God's teaching from Daniel to Malachi is God doing things for those who follow him and do his word. For instance, Joel is about receiving divine favor and a fertile, fertile land when, 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 they, when the people follow him. All of the stories between these books feature, feature people suffering consequences for sins 
and, the, and then receiving favor when they turn away from them. It also discusses that God expects purity from everyone. These taught that, that we should be serious about God, and if we are, we receive divine favors in our lives. This impacts me because it made me realize what God will do for his followers, as well as what he does for those that don't. It may be that it helped me in my decision of uh, whether or not I should be of him or of, or of the world. Are you done? Yeah. Okay. What testimony do you have in the year, throughout the year? What would you say has all these things you've learned uh, and part of your life? What lessons, what testimony do you have? share with us my, my testimony is that i was able to to, to, to to spend more time reading my bible um and and, and, re, and reading and listening to messages and yeah yeah basically just spending time with more time with god by reading my bible and listening to messages so far i've listened to up to 30 or now messages Amen. Good, good job. Now, those uh, messages in the Bible you've read, in, have they had any kind of impact in your life positively? You no, know, changing your character or how you behave as they, then we improved your lifestyle. It it it, it made me act more, more. It made me re retain my 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 god my god my godly values in around an environment that doesn't. For instance, when I'm in school. This, this, despite all of the bad things that go on, I, I still re retain my godly morals and stick to them regardless of where I am. Amen. We thank God. May the Lord keep you in the name of Jesus. He is able to keep us what? In this ungodly world and keep us holy. Thank God for that wonderful testimony. And thank God that God has improved your appetite for his word. And by reading the word and by listening to messages, my prayer is that he will also improve and help your prayer life that as we come over this year, that your testimony will be that also now I pray more fervently than I've ever prayed before in life, including reading your Bible, watching the messages, and God will take you to greater heights in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for your contribution. You've said that the, the Bible, let me just put it in a nutshell what you said, that uh, the book of Daniel to Malachi was focused on God's reward for sin and good works, how God judged those who did badly and gave them their due consequences, and those who did good, how he blessed them and promoted them and kept them. So, yes, that is true. God bless you so much for that contribution, more grace, and I pray that as we have learned that God judges sin, God judges evil, let us refrain from all appearances of evil so that we not be judged of God, but be blessed of him. May the Lord keep us all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, let's call Sister Tracy from New York to share with us what she has learned. Okay, so basically my summary from, you know, Daniel to Malachi was that, um, okay, so what we know is that the Israelites, they were constantly like, you know, falling back into sin. So God, he rose... Can you guys hear my dad talking? Okay. Um, so yeah, so basically, God was rising prophets, raising prophets to, he was telling them that, you know, the Israelites keep sinning. I want you to go tell them this and that I'll punish them in this way. And if they repent, I'll save them. And I will make sure that, you know, they're not a part of the judgment that I'm going to bring down on the Israelites. And also we see that God is a faithful God and a merciful God because, you know, the Israelites have been sending for like a, a, a really long time and he's faithful because like, um, just, I think Arnold said it in the beginning where when the um, David, I said David, Daniel and, you know, his friends were like inside the fire, um, you know, an angel led them out. So yeah, God is a faithful God to those who basically follow him. And yeah, so a corrupt, so corrupt people, and all of that, they're eventually going to have an end. So yeah, that's my summary for like in all of them. And as for my testimony, first testimony I want to say is I want to thank God that, you know, uh, 
for the clothing I wear. Because I remember before when I heard it, I wasn't really understanding it. Like, you know, I didn't want to wear a long skirt and stuff. But eventually, because of pouring more, there's a lot of things that's opened my eyes. And I on now I understand the importance of wearing, you know, my skirt. Because, first of all, it's God's commandment. I shouldn't really question it in the first place. And also, that's how women used to wear, used to um, dress back then until, you know, the devil made it normal to wear pants and stuff. Well, normal. And, yeah, so I want to thank God for that. And I was kind of ashamed to go to school with a long skirt, but now I don't really care. I go to school with a skirt, and I thank God that that's gone. And also, I want to thank him for, like, you know, bef my, my views on stuff have changed. Like, say before I was corrected for something or, put, or punished for something or told no, People don't really like being told no, but I'm glad because who knows how, how I would have turned out if my parents allowed me to do whatever I want to do. And yeah, that's my testimony. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm happy for that wonderful testimony. The Lord bless you, my sister. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. You know, uh, being a leader, and uh, most times I hear complaints of parents of you know young youths who they leave the home with skirts and when they end up in school they are with pants and uh micro minis and when they're coming back coming back they come back with gown they put their pants in the bag they hide pants in the bag leave the house with gown and go to school and dress like you know people in hollywood and then when they come back they pretend back home deceiving themselves, their, their own selves, marching on their way to hell. But, you know, uh, so uh, why I'm saying this is to, to, to highlight the importance of the, 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 the greatness of the testimony that our sister is, has just shared with us, because many youths are not proud to dress like a godly child. They're not proud of it, because we are in the society where good has become evil. And evil has become good. So you who dress like a child of God, who does that is good, is seen by the society as being stupid, being foolish. And you tend most times to be intimidated by them. And you're not proud of who you are. But rather, they should be the one that should be ashamed. How can someone naked be proud? And someone who is well covered become ashamed? Can you can't imagine it. Satan has done this. So... I thank God for what God has done for us, is that she's not a pretender. She goes to school as a child of God. She's proud to be a child of God. That is how God wants us to dress, like how God wants us to behave. Not loving those things in our heart, but sincerely believing God and standing for God in what God has asked us to do. And when we keep doing that, we will be able to influence and teach others you know, about the truth of God's word. We'll be true ambassadors of Jesus Christ, and he will use us for great works. Let us learn from our sister. For adventure, there are those who are still intimidated in their heart or somehow ashamed of the way that God wants you to dress, the way God wants you to look like. Don't be ashamed. Be proud of it. It's those people that dress ungodly. They are the people that ought to be ashamed, not you. You are covered. It's someone who is naked that covers himself. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden and they became naked and God took away the covering, when God was coming, what was Adam doing? Hiding because he was naked. It is those that are naked that should be hiding and should be ashamed. But we that are well covered, well dressed decently, should be proud and bold and let them be ashamed of how they dress. So let's not be ashamed of our God. Let's not be ashamed of that which is good. Let's stand firmly for God. And then finally, we want to um, go on our sister's summary, which goes, she talks about, you know, that what the lesson she learned or what she see that was consistent from the book of Daniel to Malachi was about the constant backsliding of the children of God and God's call for repentance through his prophets. Just summarizing what she has said. The constant backsliding of the children of God and God's call to repentance through his prophets. We can see that all that God was dealing with them throughout these books is about their backsliding and drawing them back to repentance through his prophets that he sent to them. That shows us what's important to God. God doesn't want us to backslide. God wants us to live for him. All he cares about is our righteousness, our holiness, because that's all that will bring us to heaven. So let's take this lesson home and never backslide or follow the sinful world. God bless you, Sister Tracy. Wonderful testimony there and good summary. More grace in Jesus' name. Amen. So at this point, um, let me call on uh, 
Junior from New York to share with us what he grasped from the book of Daniel to Malachi. Okay, so for the book of when Daniel to Malachi, what I learned is how idolatry, like I, idols is like, it's a sin. So like at first I was, I thought, oh, idols is like maybe just how they think they make, they making gods, stuff like that. Like I thought they were making gods for like idolatry. I thought, oh, that's an idol. So then I didn't think, oh, playing the game too much is an idol. So like, but now after like watching some, past, watching and knowing about past Puerto Rico that my mom, like at first I was like, oh, I don't really want to do this. Right. But now I'm like, oh, I have to do this. Like I have to make it to heaven. And like, cause hell is forever and I don't want to go there. So like, now I know idol is like something you take more than God. So like, I'll be playing the, on the game more than giving my time to God. So I'm like, oh, so I got to stop doing it so much. And I have to, uh, I got to stop playing the game so much. I have to give God the time in the mo- at least in the morning. Like I wake up, I have to pray to God. When I go to sleep, I have to pray to God. Not even just those two times. Like before I eat meals, I got to pray to God. Like now that, now that I learned that, I'm more careful. Like when I wake up, I'm not when I wake up, I'm not just straight taking my phone to go like to you to watch something that's not gonna help me. I pray to God, I give him thanks for my family, my life, I give him thanks for all he's given me. Okay. Amen. So um in nutshell, um what Arnold, um I mean sorry, what um um, Junior grabs from the study of Daniel to Malachi is that God doesn't want us to have idols. He doesn't want us to place anything before him, anything to come before him. So he must come first in our lives. And also that, uh, you know, his gaming, he realized that his gaming is also an idol before God. And not just gaming being idol, uh, I'll tell you most of the games that you youths play. I know I, I played game a lot growing up. I had a game store, a game shop where people come to play game. In fact, that was from gaming was where I made my money in the first time when I was a, you know, a youth. So you understand, I really was into gaming. And I want to tell you that most games that you play is evil, not even about playing them too much. They are evil. You cannot play those games and go to heaven. So you really want to refrain from playing games at all. It's not of God most of the games most of the games so i was into game heavily i sold consoles i sold playstations and all that that what i used to go and buy from dubai and sell in nigeria i was into gaming i have game shops where people come to play games i understand gaming very well so most of the games you play are evil i want you to work towards this year not just to play less of game, but to stop playing them at all. It's a thief of time. And most of the things you do there are ungodly. All right? May God deliver all of you from gaming. So at the end of this year, I would like to hear that God has helped you to stop gaming completely. That is the thing of the past in your life. May God deliver you and every one of, all, every one of us here who might still be spending time and wasting their time on gaming. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Thank you, one of, and thank you for the testimony. Lord bless you. So at this point, let's go to Romian Gray from Jamaica. Romian, over to you. Bless the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. My summary is from Daniel to Malika. These scriptures are based on the things that God has spoken and has revealed in visions some of which were curses, destructions from God. And in the book of Daniel, it talks about when the king placed the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace, but God was with them. The Lord God Almighty was most of the times angry and upset with the people, with the people, what they did, bad things you could think all the bad things you could think of most of the times the kings were living large and luxurious the but god had to send prophets to warn them and they would change how this has impacted my life it 
it helps me to fear God more and reverence him more and be respectful. Then in the mornings I would get up at when when I when um God blows breath into me again. Because when you're sleeping, you're literally dead. So when God puts back breath inside me, I get up and I pray and then I greet mommy and daddy. My testimony I ate something and I started to feel headaches. I felt ill. Um, I wasn't eating at all after eating that. And then mommy and daddy prayed. And right now I'm feeling energetic and I'm feeling better. Who could it be but God? Because God is the one that reigns over all the earth and is the best doctor ever. So when you need, when you're in sickness, all you have to do is pray and you will be better. Amen. Thank you for that wonderful word of faith and encouragement. Yes, we have a doctor above all doctors who heals all our diseases. When we are sick, all we have to do is to pick up our phone and call that doctor. And that doctor is never busy. His phone line is just going on our knees and saying, in Jesus' name, Father, I am sick here. It's happening here. And we trust him and we get our healing. Thank you so much uh, for sharing that. We God keep you. May he perfect his healing upon your life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And thank you for you know, allowing the word of God to change you, to help you to respect your parents more and to obey them and to live. That's what the lessons is all about. It's taking the corrections that God is giving us and putting it to work. Putting it to work is the key thing. Remember, throughout our studies, I always want to bring us back to the application. What is it for you and I now? What is it for you now? The application is what's important for what we read. Otherwise, we would have just studied history and that would be no good to our lives. So we want to know what is it to us? How do we apply what we are hearing? Do we put it to work? We thank God for your testimony that you know you learn from what God is the, the dealing with God, uh, um, with his, the dealing of God with his children in uh, the book of Malachi to um, I mean Daniel to Malachi and how God wants to bring them to obedience and you also apply that to your life. God bless you so much in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So at this point, let's go to uh, John, John from Minnesota. All right, so my, my, uh, uh, what did I say? In the previous year, we went over the chapters in the Old Testament. There's a lot of patterns that we learned and a lot of truths uh, behind what we learned. And we learned some positive things that people have done and some negative things that we took out of things that people have done that uh, help us not to go in their same steps as they took. Um, and uh, things that we learned that some, some um, of the things we took are from individual people and some are groups of people, like a group of people is the children of Israel. Individual pe people are like Daniel and Jonah that we went over. And an example of an individual person was a person, Jonah, how he disobeyed God and uh, he was supposed to go to Nineveh, but he decided not to go to Nineveh and go on a ship. But in the end, he ended up going to Nineveh. So God chased him and he went to Nineveh. And that was a pattern of um, him sinning and coming back to Christ when uh, God chased him and told him he needs to do what um, he was supposed to do. That, don't, that doesn't only go for him, but it also goes for Israel. Israel also disobeyed God come back to God. And it's like a whole cycle that um, is happening. So that's a pattern that I saw going through in the Old Testament. And um, it could also be in our Christian journey. As, uh, as we see new people, we're winning them for Christ. They may have a tough time coming into this holiness gospel that we're learning. They may fall. We need to encourage them to come to Christ and to stand strong. And one thing that uh, that really helped me in the last year was being honest at all times and not lying. And in school, especially like if a teacher were to give us a homework assignment, um, some of my classmates may cheat and things like that. It was real, really helping me like in the story of Daniel, how throughout he was by himself. He didn't have any parents or anything it was him, him praying to God and asking him to live a faithful 
life and um he wasn't uh he didn't turn away and turn into sin despite all the circumstances he was in and uh testimony that I had was uh also has to do with school I was in school and our teacher uh, gave us a homework or not a homework but a test and we had to grade it in class so he gave us uh different papers uh, of our classmates that we needed to grade and uh ended up with a classmate's paper and I graded it did everything honest and the person ended up getting a lot wrong in the test and I gave it back to them and they started like being like very angry with me saying that how come I didn't help them cheat and like uh change the answers on the paper so it was correct and I was like I can't do that because it's going to be a sin that's going to be cheating it's not what you work for it's just you got it wrong so I need to put it then they started telling other people that that's what I did and I was like it's better to be honest and uh, get the reward in heaven because I remembered uh, Pastor Puerto Rico saying it's it's better for you to get it wrong than to get it right and miss heaven because our heavenly goal is way more better than on on earth here. But yeah, that is my testimony, how God helped me to be honest in this year. Amen. 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 Thank you so much more grace you know there's a lot of tem temptations out there in school and for us to behave like the herds and then be like others in doing their wickedness but god wants us to always stand out like daniel shedrach Meshach, and abednego we always have to be different so god wants his children to be separate from the world from that means in the way they think this is the thing that god is talking about not because you're not going to be in school with them you're not going to you're going to be everywhere with them but when he said come out from among them and be separate is change your way of life don't think like them don't act like them don't approve of the things they approve approve of the things that god approves though it may not be popular though they may hate you though they may call you all kinds of name but that is the persecution that goes with righteousness thank you so much may the almighty god strengthen you and all of us that in our schools wherever we are we will stand out for god in jesus name amen and also want to speak to our brother's uh summary or you know uh, understanding of God's dealing uh, with his children in the book of Daniel, from the book of Daniel rather to Malachi. And he said he can see a pattern of consistent disobedience and reconciliation to God after God's punishment. So you see that what that tells us here, I want to point out one fact there is that there is no disobedience, there is no backsliding, there's no rebellion without punishment. Some people recover from the punishment, some never, and you know, are perished forever. So my prayer is that you will learn from that about God, that you will not even tamper with, you know, disobeying God, you know, because you don't know whether you recover from it or whether you vanquish from it. Yes, Jonah recovered, some of the children of Israel recovered, but most of them perished. It was only remnants that was always left. That means remnant means a few of them that survived God's judgment, a few of them. All right, so you don't want to put yourself in that position. Always be a child of obedience all the days of your life, and you will reap the beautiful reward that the Almighty God has in store for all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Ryan. God bless you. Uh, I said, Ryan, John, <laughs> God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So at this point, let's call on Giovanni from Maryland. Um, I, I, I don't. I'm sorry to say, but I couldn't really get this assignment done. So, sorry? I, I, I didn't get in any notes to um for this assignment this time. I kind of missed out. Sorry. What happened? Why you missed out? Uh, I was I think I was I don't remember. I think I was I think I tried. I don't want to go on a lie, but I just ended up forgetting. And then I realized that I didn't really have enough time to do it. One month, Giovanni. All right. Uh, this not, this is a new year, and you have one month. It's on me. It's my It's on you. Okay. All right. So forth. I appreciate that. So God will help you to do better. So if we know from where we're falling, then we do what we repent, and we turn away from where we have done wrong. And this is a new year, a new opportunity. So please, let's not to go back to what we did previous years. This is a year of greater works for Jesus. 
So we have to do greater works for Jesus. That is the time you have to put in more time to study, to pay, focus on your assignments and do them. It's a year of greater work. So that at the end of this year, you have great and tremendous testimonies to share. You would have improved so much in the Lord in every area of your life. So please, Giovanni, I want to see a better of you in 2022, okay? Mm. All right. God bless you. Okay. Um, let's uh, go to uh, who have I missed here? Marilyn from Arizona. Hallelujah. Well, I learned from the Amen. book of Daniel in the book of Malachi is that um, because everything is possible. Um, when God calls on, on, on us, we need to listen to him. We need to follow him. We need to respect him. Like God called on Jonah and he refused and God sent a flood until he decided to obey God and God let him go. And even though he didn't want God to have mercy upon the children of Nineveh, but God said, if I don't have mercy, and if you also do wrong, if I don't have mercy on you, will you be happy? Like some things, some situation that we need, we need to forgive those who actually wrong us. We need to forgive people so God can forgive us. And my testimony this year, my testimony is that God protected us, protected my family, even though we had COVID on, on, on November and the year 2022. All the year, we didn't celebrate New Year. May God protect us, heal all of us, heal the baby. And I want to thank God because I went through a lot of persecutions. Uh, like this blog that started, my teacher sent me a course, like a class I'm supposed to take the cosmetology that's talking about makeups and other stuff. I talked to a, a sister and she advised me to take to tell and to tell the teacher to change my course. I thought it would be complicated, but God actually told the teacher's heart. And she actually changed my course. I thought it would take a week, but eventually she took just a few hours to change my course. And I thank God for that. Amen. So the Lord bless you. Um, our sister um, shared a testimony of what um, God has done for her in school, being able to stand for God or stand for righteousness and saying some certain lessons. I will not do it because it's against my faith. You know, I have um, constantly taught us in this class that, you know, don't be quiet, don't be silent in school, especially for those of us where you're entering colleges, even in your you know, high schools and everything. Don't look at your professors as if they are, they are all knowing and what they say is true or they are infallible. That's not true. It's garbage in, garbage out. You who have the word of God, is more knowledgeable than them in matters of life. So you always have to stand for God. Don't in any way, you know, um, uh, be silent in school, be silent in class, always speak up for righteousness. Always speak, when, the, when your teachers stand before you and, you know, molest God or talk about bring down the things of God, resist him or her. Rise up and tell me you're wrong. I've, I did that, go to my college, I have a history, university where I grew up, the, uh, some of my teachers, I see my friend today because of I, I resisted them firmly in class and they were ashamed. They have nothing to say when I ask them questions. So learn the word of God. So Mr. Master, you will get higher in, in school, in higher learnings. You're going to see this. You're going to see where you will have teachers who want to even teach you garbage. God expects you to stand up for him. So be bold to stand up and say, God, uh, this is contrary. This is not truth about God. All right. So, and uh, also we thank God for healing. You know, for God healed our family for COVID. That's uh, a sign that God answers prayer, that God is alive. He's not a God that is in abstract or far away from us. And then also, before I see her hands, but before that, she talked about the need to answer God's call and follow Him. God is calling us, you know, and that's what we see in Daniel to Malachi. We see God's call, God's call on His children to follow Him. 
God expects us to answer his call and follow him. And if we refuse, there are consequences. There are consequences. And we need to forgive others. He mentioned about um, Jonah. The reason why Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh is because of unforgiveness. He couldn't forgive Assyrians for what they have done to the children of Israel. He couldn't forgive them. And that's what God is saying. He wants us to forgive for those who have wronged us in order for us to receive forgiveness as well. So please, let's learn to have a heart of forgiveness. These are one of the lessons we learn from our studies. God bless you. So Sister Marilyn, I see you still raise your hands. Is there anything you want to add to what you say? Oh yeah, I had a lot of persecution this year. Like I had problems with my attendance in school. Like the teachers putting me absent when I'm in class. Like I my they call my daddy saying I wasn't in class. And sometimes it's like my parents were doubting me that I wasn't really in school. Like I never had that before in my life because like it wasn't easy. It was a very big persecution. But eventually, uh, my mom come around and she believed me that I was I was in class because one thing that makes her believe was because I'm in school with my elder brothers because we're in the same class, even though I'm a younger sister. And actually, they all told my mom I was in class. I was in all the classes, but they marked me wrong. I don't know why. It is well. Let's not let that also put bitterness in our hearts because all those are persecution. The Bible said after we've suffered a while, he will make a way of escape for us. So it is God, you know, using those things to prove our faith, to, you know, make us mature. So it will always come in life. So let's us know that we are dealing with the enemy. Thank God for the truth that rather prevail. Like you said, bury the truth and it will rise after three days. So don't worry about lies that anybody may tell about you. Do the right thing. Stand on truth. Stand on righteousness. Eventually, truth will surface and we prevail. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. God keep you. God strengthen you. God empower you to go on for him in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. So at this point, let me call on Brother Joseph from Massachusetts. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, Daniel Tanakai was that the pattern I noticed in the minor prophet books was that God was always warning his child or his children about what he was going to do. And when I saw that God said to warn the people about what they were doing and how they were sitting and they were in Daniel 2, 4 and 5, God warned the kings in Daniel's time using his prophet Daniel to tell them about what they were doing and it mostly involved pride. In Zephaniah and Haggai, God was sending his warnings through his prophets and being mer merciful but the people were hardening their hearts and they weren't listening. I learned that when God sends us warnings, we should listen and turn back to him and God will be pleased and will be blessed. And in 2021, God really helped me and he was really there when every time when I was praying to him. And even though there was sometimes I did stuff that hurt him and I wasn't following the things that he said, he still kept me alive, and I thank God that he was doing that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, uh, our brother talked about, uh, you know, uh, God's mercy upon his life, that, you know, he wasn't that obedient uh, for the year of 2021. But he can see that God, you know, though he wasn't following what God has said, and God has still uh, preserved him, God still helped him, God still showed him mercy, and God said his goodness leads us to repentance. The essence is that we may see his goodness and we turn to him. So my hope and prayer is that in this 2022, 
you will do greater works for Jesus. You will really listen. You will really obey him completely and turn from everything that you know that displeases the heart of God. He desired that we obey him completely. And like you said, that was all God was dealing with them in Daniel. And from Daniel to Revelation, it's about calling the children of God from their rebellion, from their disobedience, to turn to him and to live for him and to obey him. That's the call of it. So God is also calling you the same way, the application of it. Like you learned, he's calling you this year, as we have heard, year of greater works. Greater works means greater righteousness. We mean we are going to live for God. We are going to do exploit for God in living holy for him and in obeying him and in standing for him. May God help you to obey him completely this year and in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. So at this point, um, let me call on uh, Brother Kenley. What do you... Um, no, we've not seen you for a while, but welcome. So uh, share with us uh, what you gained from the book of Ma Daniel to Malachi. All right. So what I learned from Daniel to Malachi, or the summary that I have for it, is that you should always put your trust in God. You know, do not be unfaithful to him and make sure you always follow him and put all your trust inside of him because he can do many great things. He'll answer your prayers and everything. For example... With Daniel, he always put his trust in God. And look where we got him. We got him very far because there's times that he didn't really have much, but he always put his trust in God. And, you know, he was always saved. And there's a lot of problems that, you know, I have had in my life and God has always prevailed. For example, around two, three weeks ago, my whole family had COVID, right? And none of us, like we all came on this guard because um, my dad, me, and my sister, you already know them. We would pray a lot every single night. And in the morning, we would wake up and pray, make sure that we had a good day, make sure that we got everything that we needed done. And, you know, by the time we came to came back, we go back to school, we were all fine. And I, I praise God a lot for that. Okay, praise the Lord. Uh, we want to thank God for the healing for the family and all that God has done, uh, manifesting his healing power over you all because of his mercy. And you talked about Daniel, um, it's about putting trust in God. Uh, putting our trust in God means to obey him. That's what it means. Uh, if we put our trust in God, it means we put our trust in his words. We live by his words. That's what it means. It means that what God says to us is what we believe. He said, we should not lie, we should not lie. If you say we should not watch bad things, we don't do them. That is putting our trust in God. Putting our trust in God is not just believing that God is going to give you a new shoe. He's going to give you a new iPad. That's not putting our trust in God. Putting our trust in God is believing God's word and living by God's word in all righteousness. That is what Daniel did. That is what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. And we saw how God manifested himself in their life. And today, something that happened many gener generations ago, we are still talking about Daniel, Shadrach, and Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego. So if you also will put your trust in God in that way, true obedience, complete obedience to his word, many years to come, if Jesus tarries, people will still be talking about the exploits that God did to you in this life. My prayer is that all of us will make ourselves a vessel unto God by trusting in him completely through obedience to his words in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's go, Brian. I was I called you earlier. Do you have anything to share, Brian? At Ryan from Illinois. I know you're new to the class, but do you have anything to share with us? Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, all right, go ahead. I play video games a lot, but ever since I found God, I realized that I wasn't actually giving much attention to the word that God actually sent. So, like, uh, ever, ever since I started this, I started playing less and less. And I, and I have to completely. And Sorry, could you speak up a little bit louder or come to your device? I'm, I'm having a hard time hearing. I said, okay. I said I used to I play video games a lot, but ever since I, I play games, you still can't hear me. You said play games. I said I play video games a lot, but ever since I found okay. this group, uh, I started playing less and less, 
and realized that I wasn't actually giving much attention to God. And like, and ever since I found this group, I started putting less and less. And I and I hope someday I can actually quit completely and learn about God instead of video games. Amen. The Lord will deliver you completely from video gaming in Jesus' name. Amen. Ryan said that since Chief he found this group, he became part of us. He started playing less and less of video game, and he realized how much attention he didn't give to God. So now things are changing in his life. God is transforming his life. He's beginning to order his priorities right. And his goal is to work towards eliminating video gaming in his life. May the Lord bring that to pass this year in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. And um, uh, Sister Yvonne, are you ready to share with us before we wrap it up? Yes. All right, go ahead. Um, so to Daniel and to Malachi, um, I learned that you should always have like faith in God because Shednak and Abindigo, Meshad, Shadrach and Abindigo, when they told them to bow down, when the people told them to bow down to the to to the statue or whatever they were doing. Um, they were the only three who did not bow down. And that relates to me because about, yeah, last year, my teacher, I always wear like skirts for gym class and also skirts all the time while everybody would change into their pants and stuff like that. And my teacher tells me that um, she recommends me to wear pants because she said I would feel more comfortable in it. And I said, no, thank you. I'm good with the skirts that I'm wearing. And then she says, um, no, I think I sh you should wear um, pants because it'll be more flexible for you. And then I say no again. And then she tells me to go um, and sit down um, on a bench and I could not participate for gym class. So when I go and sit down, nothing happened to me. And um, that tells me that I should keep doing that and I shouldn't have listened to her because that's the same thing that the three boys did. Amen. We thank you for that testimony. And um, we say it, have faith in God. And like you heard me explain earlier, and we saw with the Hebrew boys, having faith in God is having faith in God's word, obeying God's word in all things. We saw the Hebrew boys, they live holy, and they refuse to do unrighteousness and trust that God is able to deliver them from whatever consequences that may be. And even if God refuses to do so, that they are okay with that. So you see, they had great faith with God. So even if God wanted to allow them to die in the fire, that they don't mind dying instead of, you know, bowing to or doing such evil, uh, you know, before God. So they were, they were really, really, uh, you know, um, uh, standing for what God, you know, has taught them. So that's having faith in God. So also we heard our sister's testimony, you know, how, you know, she turned down the offer to wear or the persuasion by her teacher not even an offer. It was a persuasion. She wasn't really given an op option. You know, but they would make it present. They would always present it nice like you have an option. Like they're trying to give you an option. But in the sense, what they're trying to do is to make you change and do sin and do wickedness. You have always become seen from her that you can always stand out. You can always live differently. You can always resist that and nothing will happen. You can always stand on your faith and you will see that, you know, you see God stand for you. So most times those things we think that looks impossible, looks difficult. It's hard. Like, oh, if I say this, what will happen? I remember one time I had to be in court and, uh, you know, they say we have to swear. And I told the judge, I told them, I, you know, I was thinking, oh, how am I gonna, this is going to be a big struggle. I didn't even know it's that easy. I was like, it's going to be a big thing. I was like, I tell the judge, I, said, I can't swear. My faith does not allow me to, oh, you can't swear? Okay, just affirm. You see, it wasn't even a big deal. Most times is that we don't talk. That's the problem. We don't speak. That's the problem. So speak up for your faith. Stand for what you believe. And you will see that God will back. It's never a big deal for the most part that God will always do that which is right for you. So please, let's resist sin, whatever. Let's be different. Let's not be ashamed of God. It's those who do not know God 
that should be ashamed. You are the one who knows truth, who knows the living God. Be proud and be bold, you know, of the truth, you know, and speak it wherever you go. Stand for Jesus and let the devil be ashamed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. At this point, uh, I think I got everyone. Is there anyone I missed who is uh, participating with your camera open that I missed? All right, well, I don't really uh, see any. I think I got everybody. Sister Hannah has All heard. right. Sister Hannah Who? Has Sister Hannah from the UK. All right, Sister, Sister Hannah. Oh, wonderful, Sister Hannah. Please, welcome to share with us. What happened to my friend? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, um, I, in my study of um, Daniel's Malachi, there were um, four recurring themes which I saw, which was one, um, the constant and like rep repetition of evil from the children of Israel. Then the second one was God's judgment. The third being a call to genuine repentance from a profession. Um, I will give a brief summary of the first six books because the the um, pattern repeats. So in the interest of time, I'll just speak on those. The first one I'll talk about is Hosea because that was my personal favorite when I was studying. That was because of like the strong symbolism in the relationship between Hosea, his wife and his children and the children of Israel with God. And it relates to them because Hosea's wife was, and God told him to go and marry Goma, who was a prostitute. And it would, it, it's an ironic thing for, you know, God tells you to go and marry a prostitute, but it was because essentially it, it was a reflection of the children of Israel being married to Christ and even us as the church now being married to Christ but they were going back to their sin they were going back to that their idolatry and essentially breaking the faithfulness in a marriage and still though Hosea was persistent he was diligent in seeking Goma out he went and he brought her back and he brought her back and kept on being diligent to seek her out and and bring her back from her sin from going back to her previous lovers the way that re relates to the children of israel was that idolatry god seeked them out he still was diligent he saw after them like the lost sheep and brought them back from their sin um there was also the judgment because the, the, the names of Hosea's three children, Jezreel being yet a little while, Lo Rama being I will no longer have mercy, and Lo Ami being you are not my people and I am not your God, is a very strong judgment. And that is to say that God would not stand for evil, he would not stand for their sin. So he was calling for genuine repentance and for, from that he would forgive and restore. Then there was Daniel, which it was a um, one of the only books where he was a recipient of the judgment of God, being that he had been taken captive to Babylon. And fr from there, he was prepared as a prophet and he was used for the judgment of Babylon through his interpretation of dreams. Then there was Joel, where he was a prophet in the time of natural, the judgment was natural disaster. And that shows that the judgment of God is harsh. However, it is important to know that God's judgment is not about hatred. It's not that he's judging you because he dislikes you, because he's angry but it's to, for us, it is for the children of Israel and also extended to us to realize our sin and to turn away from the sin, to go back to him and trust in God. Amos is an example of 
God not looking at status. He doesn't care about your background. He has no respect of persons. He chooses who is capable of doing the work. And then the second point in Amos, which I noticed was the vision of, of seeing the plumb line, which essentially was meant to mean that the standard of which God was going to judge by, and that he has a set standard and he does not change the standard for anybody. However, again, God restored the land and he restored his people. In Obadiah, it was a short but very strong warning and judgment on the different tribes of Israel and their sin. And although that we as a body of believers are not the specific tribes of Israel, it is still a way for us to like see our fault as members of the church. And lastly, Jonah is a very famous story, but I think is quite a powerful one because we all know he was given the task to preach to the people of Nineveh because of their wickedness. But the three points I took from that was firstly, you can never hide from God or his assignments or what he tells you to do because he is omnipresent. Then it is that we do not merit his forgiveness. It's not because of our position. It's not that God looks at us and sees that let's say we're rich. So he's going to change his standard and forgive you for your sins. No, it's, there's a set standard and we do not merit it, but when we truly repent, he will forgive. It was very surprising to see how Jonah had quickly forgotten about the fact that he had, he had begged for God's forgiveness when he was in the belly of the whale, after God had decided to forgive Nineveh. But it was a reminder from God that, as I said, he doesn't care about reputation or race. He cares for everybody. He wants everybody to be saved. And then following on from that, evangelism is the heartbeat of God. So we should always go to preach the gospel to anybody, to all the lost, to people who God has led us to. We should not judge based on looks, say, okay, that person doesn't seem like they will accept the gospel. If we're led to preach to them, we should. Amen. That's my contribution. Oh, sorry. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Stan. Do you have any testimony? How has this study of, uh, you know, the book of Daniel and uh, to Malachi, has there any way it has imparted your life spiritually? Any testimony to share? Um, it, um, my testimony is, a, is about divine protection. Um, I went to the park quite some time ago. And while I was there, I was I went there to to practice volleyball. And so while I was there, I noticed this man came into the park and he like stood some distance away from me. And for the the 20, 20 or so minutes I was there, he stood in that that one place. And so I took I, God, the Holy Spirit, stirred me up to to notice him. And when I was going home, I decided that I'd check to see if he was actually for looking at me or following me. So I took a pathway and I noticed he started walking, but then I took a sharp cut. And on my way to the other um, exit out, these two men came up to me and told me that he had been watching me for the, for the past 15 to 20 minutes and he had only started following me. So they went up to him and they, like prevented him from following me so that I could make my way home. So my testimony is to thank God for his protection, to thank God because he's always there. He's always watching over his children. He will not neglect you. He will not leave you to be potentially a kidnapped victim. So that is my testimony. Amen. All right. We thank God for your testimony. God bless you. Uh, wonderful uh, and summary. Uh, we thank God for all you have learned. Uh, focus, highlight point, you know, talking about Loriama, you know, we talked about this during our study with Jose and even now God said, I will no longer have mercy, you know, which we always emphasize. And we can see it from all the studies from the book and the minor prophets, from Daniel and all the minor prophets, that there is a point where you get with God in disobedience 
and God makes up his mind that he will no longer have mercy on you, that his judgment is certain. So he doesn't, God will surely judge you. So and I will, had always pleaded with us that we should never get to that point in life where God says, I will no longer have mercy on this person. I will surely judge him or her. We don't want to find ourselves in that court. And then we can see, like we say, that God used um, the story of uh, Hosea to, to, um, call it, to dramatize all his dealing with children, the children of Israel. And you can see that drama with Jose, you can see it play out throughout the study of the man of prophets. You can see it, it's the same thing. They go out, they rebel against God, they run away, they become prostitutes you know, to God. And uh, God goes back to seek them by sending prophets to them and trying to recover them. So we see it the same way. And it gets to the point where God will always say, no, my judgment is certain. I will no longer have mercy. I will surely judge you. I will only save the remnants who has been obeying me, who has been hearkening to my voice. So you see that um, play out there. You see that there's something also she mentioned that God has a set standard. God has a set standard and will never lower that standard for anybody. Anybody. His standard is set and we must all meet that bar. And God uses anybody. He uses anyone who makes himself as available. So don't look at yourself as a common and nobody. God cannot use me. Who am I? No, God does not look at things that way as he's dealt with Amos. It is not about your status, where you're coming from, whether your father has been a pastor before, your mother has been a prophetess. It doesn't matter or how rich or poor you are, whatever. It, God doesn't look at those things. He's just looking for a person who is faithful, who makes him or herself available. And that's what God is looking for to use in this generation in Jesus' mighty name. So I pray that all of us, we make ourselves available, even as we continue to obey God in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, let us uh, say hello to Oglaya, Oglaya Jensen. <laughs> Oglaya, welcome. You can say hello to the class. Hello. Yes, we can hear you now. Uh, good evening. Good evening. <laughs> uh, do I introduce myself? <laughs> However you want to do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, greetings to you all. I'm Sister Glaya Jensen. I'm uh, officially stated in uh, Horma Holland chapter. And uh, I'm here just for a short week to visit uh, Hannah and Hanya for, before their departure to your site. So, uh, and I decided to join them today. So I'm happy to see actually the youths here. It's a great encouragement for me. For me personally, I'm a youth leader in uh, Holland ch chapter also, so I'm actually happy that I have joined today and to see all those uh, youths, all those faces actually here. So I'm actually really excited and to see past clip, of course. So thank God that I'm actually here to enjoy this uh, session. God so bless you, you all. Your, your and God bless you. We look forward to seeing you someday in the United States. Uh, in one of our conferences. <laughs> by God's special grace, I will try this year. <laughs> I will set it on my list to come and visit you. Amen. Amen. All right. We look forward to it. God bless you. All right. So thank you. So I think I saw um, somebody now. Hanil. No, I saw Hanil. Is he still here? Hanil, you still with us? Yes, I'm still with you in my computer first. All right, okay. My computer right. first. Do you have a... The All right. recurring themes that I got from studying Daniel to Malachi, the, the things that stood out to me a lot were, were Israel's, was man specifically, disobedience to God, and the resulting devastating and the resulting devastating effects. For example, Israel's rebellion led to the first wave of exile, which Daniel, which Daniel and his three friends were part of. On top of that, God does have a plan to risk to rescue his people, and he genuinely wants to, he genuinely wants to have mercy on people to repent. But in, in some of the later books, for example, for example, Zechariah, it gives more. It gives like some detail on the rebuilding efforts to the temple, 
when when the exiles are actually allowed to turn back to, re, to return to Israel. For example, Zechariah and and Micah speak about that. On top of that, on, there's a theme, recurring theme of the Day of Judgment, which is expounded upon in Malachi and also Job, which was probably my favorite book out of out of the some out of all the different books because one short sure, like so, gets every a lot of the recurring themes just like in just one book. God's mercy, his his true desire to re, to rescue Israel. It that is they truly repent, although it's probably not going to last because they keep on recurring and backsliding into idolatry, and the, to the future day of the Lord to be as the past day of the Lord when he delivered Israel. For example, the ten plagues where God where God delivered Israel from Egypt, but because Israel transgressed against God, God placed God sent a swarm of locusts to destroy the, to destroy the crops in, in the land, which mirrored the eighth plague of locusts to Egypt. So the future day of the Lord would be like the past day would be like the past days of the Lord where God delivered Israel and even greater because God's presence would come to the temple the the lands that were previously ravaged by ravaged by locusts would be delivered um God's presence would visibly only that but it would be in every one of us his spirit will be will be poured upon all flesh which Peter quote which Peter quoted at Pente Pentecost and on top of that um on top of that, God truly desires to rescue his people after he tr after they truly repent. That is what and that's what I understood from this from the study of Daniel to Malachi. My and that's my testimony. God is the one that gives us knowledge. He's not just through through staying disciplined to do studies and being able to and actually like planning and stu and studying and working hard i managed to and with the power of god i managed to get good grades to be able to to be able to attend school to be able to attend a good school where i where i'm living in the uk right now unfortunately i i have to leave because i'll soon be joining it because i'll soon be, jo be joining your friend i have to go over the atlantic i have to wave that that by for now, but my God, but I know that God has good plans for me, so I'm not all that, so I'm not that upset as I thought it would be. On top of that, God, we've been to, we've been told that to, that this year is a year of great works and determination, but in 2021 was the year of was the year of radical evangelism. I was I felt really bad. I felt really bad because I wasn't able to like directly bring in the lot of thoughts with Jesus. But I managed to get or to get one to decide one person and like gradually increase this and gradually increase this guts me that that was sharing some guts with me. And I managed to like and right now he said that he wants to like do a Bible study while we're in registration i know that you people call it home run basically so basically he wants to start a bible study at that time so i know that there's so there's, there's, there's some progress with evangelism and i managed like big, and i managed like un, to bring this person in consciousness of, of god and and like allow him to be more conscious of of the god uh, of the of being more conscious of, of like Christianity and, and his walk with God because he was pre because he previously attended church but then he just stopped when he actually like started at, at like 13 so now like being around me and seeing my character he there's more consciousness and desire to improve himself in Jesus Christ so I praise the Lord for that amen amen thank you amen, amen. thank you so much sir Anil, the Lord bless you more grace, more anointing. May the Lord use you to evangelize all your peers and bring them to the Lord Jesus. That is what we are meant to do. We are meant to influence others. We are meant to be the light that attracts them, that reflect, expels darkness from them. We shouldn't allow their darkness to quench our light. Let them see how we behave. Let them see our character. 
and ask us questions that will make us preach the gospel to them. So we have to behave ourselves when we are out there, behave like a true child of God, be different. Let our lives, God wants us to bring our peers to him. Why are, is our you know, peers not with us? Why are not bringing our friends every time we have a meeting here once a month? We should be bringing all our friends to join us in the meeting. So we should be the ones that I'm trying to draw you into gaming, into whatsoever. Draw them to your meetings, what you do. Let them you know, have fun your way in the presence of God. Also, we thank God for what you have observed is uh, Israel's disobedience and the resulting devastating effect, the resulting devastating effect of disobedience. That's always is, is, you can see in the book what we have studied from Daniel to um, Malachi. And we can see that God, like we said, God truly desire to rescue his people if his people will truly repent. Even when God is judging, punishing, it's not for destruction, it's because he desire to rescue them. So we saw that desire. So in a nutshell, we've all done well, wonderful contributions and summaries and all that here and there. In a nutshell, what we can take away from this study is that the dealing of God with the children of Israel from Daniel to Revelation is just simple. One thing, to remove sin from them and to cause them to live in obedience with him. That is all. all. See all the struggle, all the drama, whatsoever that took place. The whole, all that God was after is to remove sin from their life, is to deal with sin permanently in their life, to cause them to understand that they can live perfectly and live holy for them. And with all that, we see his judgment, we see the consequences for sin, we see the reward, we see his protection for the remnant, we see all that. But all that God is driving to see is that I hate sin. I can't tolerate sin. Though you are my child, if you sin, I will judge you. If it matters to go into hell, you will go to hell. There is no pity in it. So that's God, what, what God has been wanting to make us understand in all that we studied. Look, if you look at all the book, go back to your notes. You will see it's the same thing. You will go back to all your notes. You will see it's the same thing. It's dealing with sin and rebellion because God does not tolerate it. So don't let anybody pull you We are in the world today of grace of one saved forever saved. Oh, you're giving your life to Jesus. God is a merciful father. Forget that nonsense. Look at the scriptures and see what the Bible is saying. We live by the word of God, not by the doctrines of men. So look at what the scriptures are saying. We see that God did not spare his children who sinned against them, against him. He punished them. He judged them. So let us fear God. What is the conclusion of the whole matter? Fear God and keep his whole commandments. This is the whole duty of you and I, the whole duty of humanity. May God bless us as we do that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. At this point, we're going to turn over to our coordinator, Pastor Honest, to take over and bless us. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Young people, hallelujah. It's amen. wonderful. Amen. Pastor, I am... I, I am going back to my youth now. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful to be in the presence of youth. Pastor, we have some um, other uh, youth joining us from Jamaica. Um, Sister Sanya, um, she, I think she oh. keeps going on and off screen because I just saw her face a while ago. Um, I was hoping she'd be able to, yeah. to say hello to us. A anyway. Later on, if she come back, she could say hello. Sister Sanya, are you there? Okay. Hello, Sister Sanya. Oh. How are you? Oh, fine. Oh, bless you. I'm not sure how much you've been able to hear because I know you have been... Is she here? I think we have lost her again. Oh, she's there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure how much you've been able to hear, Sister Sanya. Um, are you able to greet our youths here? Um, or have anything to contribute before we move on? Sister Sanya? Um, I started reading it on um, Daniel to I didn't reach the Malachi as yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you want to share what you have learned from it and any testimony? Because uh, I don't know if you have heard some of the testimonies from our youths that they have been sharing. So do you, would you like to share something that you have learned? And also to share a testimony, what God has done for you. I've learned that um, I should take God's word seriously because in those times, 
when Israel used the backslide and used to punish them, tell them they must come to repent. And I learned a lot from Daniel because Daniel encouraged me to pray more because Daniel used to pray three times a day. Although they used to say to him that um, there was a decree going out that no one should pray to their God or anything. But I thank God for everything that he has done for me. And my testimony is, um, this one is that God has given me the strength to pray more and to be holy. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Sister Sanya, for sharing with us. Uh, truly, you have said something which is wonderful. That is, uh, Daniel has taught us, taught yourself, and I'm sure um, for some of us to pray more. And this is what the Lord requires of us. It's a way um, of communicating with God. He says to come unto him. He's the one who hears and answers prayer. And I trust um, all of our youngsters, um, the spirit of prayer will pour out upon them this year, in the year 2022, so that they will be able to do more for their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And God bless you, Sister Sanya. And God Amen. bless you, all of your youth. It's, um, I, I'm just, you know, uh, it's really wonderful. I can I can't really say, um, Pastor, how much I'm grateful for you inviting me. And uh, I, I must say, I, I wrote it down in my diary, Pastor, one when we spoke. And I just remembered in the evening, ah, something um, reminded me. I should be in this meeting tonight. And uh, when I jumped and checked, yes, it was there. And I'm grateful that the Lord gave me that uh, reminder to the Holy Spirit because I would have missed out on something. I know you might have called me to remind me, but I'm glad I'm here and I'm glad I've been enjoying um, what the Lord is doing among our youths in uh, North America and beyond. And uh, as I listen to um, our youths, how they shared uh, what the Lord has done for them uh, in, in terms of their uh, review of the book of Daniel to um, Malachi, uh, and also here when they share their testimony, I was grateful and uh, I must also congratulate one of our youngsters. I think his name was um, Arnold for sharing. Uh, he was quite brave to share how the Lord has delivered him from uh, the sins of the world, from pornography and, and, and masturbation. That was quite brave of you, young man. And I pray as you have also shared that the Lord will use that as a way of uh, encouragement to others. When I actually reflected on my life as a youngster, um, you know, unfortunately, my dad wasn't a Christian. And uh, I was actually introduced to that sort of thing um, from that time. And, uh, you know, yes, a pastor, you know, I, I'm sure lots of, if you speak to lots of pastors and other um, people, um, you see, which are older, they and you really speak to them from the heart. You will hear they uh, share similar experiences, and so I was actually introduced to that from a young age. And uh, and well, I, what can I say? Um, my father didn't know the Lord, and because he didn't know the Lord, he didn't know better. But um, as a young Christian, because I came to challenge and was challenged by uh, the ways of the world, but God was able to deliver me as he has delivered Arnold, and I'm sure others, from the sins of and the lust of the world. And, uh, my and my encouragement to you youngsters is that any challenge you have, you know, any temptation you have, the word of the Lord is always there. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. Uh, Pastor, I remember that was one of my key verses as a youngster. Even when I went to university, and you know in university, uh, you are even challenged more because what you see happening around you, you know that it was not of God. And if you didn't really have the mind of Christ in you and to come together with other people of like mind, on university we had something we call um, Christian fellowship. And that was a very, um, that was a source of strength for um, Christians on campus, that is university that came together and was able to build um, faith and to stand on the truth. Because when you see, when in a university, everybody are free to do whatever they want to do. And I remember in university, one of the scripture that really kept me was the scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 10 
and verse 13. It's a quite a familiar one. It says, there are no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able to bear, but will, with the temptation, also make a way of escape, a to escape that he may be able to bear it. And so my encouragement for our youngsters, for our youth, anytime you are tempted, because the, the devil will come to you with lies. In the book of John chapter 8, it tells us that Satan is a father of lies. He will come to you and he will tempt you with all sorts. But the Bible is clear. No temptation that is common to man. God will give you a way of escape. And my prayer is that as you read the word of the Lord, as you pray, uh, the Lord will help you. You will grow in spiritual maturity. Nobody can tell you um, anything otherwise than the word of the Lord. I was encouraged um, by one of our sisters who shared that, you know, the teacher who was telling her um, to uh, put on um, the trousers and she stood her ground. Um, that was a remarkable testimony. I pray the Lord will strengthen um, our youngsters. The sister who shared, I think it was Marilyn, who shared about changing her course from cosmetology. Um, our brother who shared about um, not cheating and in marking the paper for um, his classmate not to cheat and who stood for um, the truth. That reminds me of Daniel because we have been looking at the book of Daniel as one of the major study for the youths last year. That reminded me of Daniel and his friends, that is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and how they stood for Christ. They stood for their God. Amid what was happening to them, they were in a new environment. So you, your, you yourselves have been, have, you know, you have found yourself in a new environment uh, in terms of this is, perhaps not the culture of your parents. You're in a, you know, in a new place in America. Uh, certainly some of you were born in America. And so you are growing up into that society. But if you look America, also here in Europe, uh, by and large, the ways of the world are not the ways of God. And as you study the book of Daniel, one of the things you would have seen is that how, God, how these um, three boys, including Daniel, they actually stood and they were determined. In the book of Daniel chapter one, in that introductory book and verse eight, we hear Daniel, um, the Bible records us that Daniel purposed. The word purpose there suggests to us that it was a deliberate um, made up mind that I am not going to sin against God. Daniel purposed in his heart. Look at it in Daniel chapter one and verse eight. You can make note of it also. Daniel purposed in his heart not to defile himself with the king's meat. Okay, so the, why was that so? Because the king in those days, those meat were sacrificed to idols. And Daniel and his friends knew it. And so Daniel purposed, Daniel made up his mind, I will not do so. I will not partake. How does it relate to you as youngsters? You have to have a purposeful mind, a made up mind. I am not going to do what sinners do. I am not going to do what my friends do because my friends, my classmates, they are not of the same mind as I am. They are not a Christian. You should be a light to affect them. And I'm really grateful and I'm really um, heartened by some of the testimonies I've heard because already you have started to do that. You have started to make your light shine. Book of Matthew chapter 5. Make your light so shine before men that they might see your good work and come to glorify your Father which is in heaven. And so when you stand on the truth in your class, I heard Pastor sharing earlier about, you know, some of our youngsters, they will wear the skirt. This is our, um, our ladies. They will put on the skirt when they are going to school. But then when they go to school, uh, they will change in the trousers or the pants, as you call it. And then on the way home, they will also change. Here in the UK, uh, it is more of a case of uh, um, the skirt being um, too short. You know, 
the skirts will be um, our young our young ladies. They will roll the skirt up too so short. It's like mini skirts. And so, you know, it's easy to expose themselves. If they're going up the stairs in the school, you know, they are exposing themselves. And of course, when they're coming home, they will now roll it back to the appropriate length. Or some of them will just wear it um, as it is. So that is a deliberate attempt to for defilement. May that be not found in yourself, my youngsters. May the Lord help you Amen. that you will be determined to stand for truth, that you will not defile yourself, that you will not take part in the things of the world. The Bible tells us in the book, um, it tells us uh, elsewhere in the Bible that we are not of the world. Uh, we are uh, set apart in the book of James chapter four. It tells us that anyone who is a friend of the world is an enemy of God. So who wants to be an enemy of God? Do you? I certainly not. I don't want to be an enemy of God. So who can be an enemy of God? Those who are being enemies of God, they are foolish. And so my prayer is, is that you will not love the things of the world. It might seem fascinating. You know, we are we are a bit older now and we have come the way. As I shared earlier, part of my story. Yes, I was exposed to pornography when I was when I was young. But I determined as a young Christian that I had to kick that habit. I had to um, you know, it was although it wasn't the fault of my home that I was exposed to, but then I have responsibility to decide if I should continue that way or not that way. And God is able. God is able. So whatever the challenges that you face, you can make up your mind. Daniel made up their mind. A determined mind. This year is a year of determination. And I know yes. the Lord will help you as you are determined. I'm going to live this life for God. I will serve him with my whole heart. In the book of Romans chapter 12, it tells us in verse 1 and 2, we are presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. So what you do with your body, God is interested. God is interested how you take care of your body, your cleanliness, how you treat your body. Are you drinking alcohol? Are you trying to go around the bush uh, or in the corner to try and smoke? Whatever you do with your body, is it glorifying God? Because the Bible says your body is the temple of the God, of the living God. And the spirit of the Lord dwells in you. And if you are not careful, you will defile yourself. That will not be a portion in Jesus' name. That is my prayer. And so, um, youngsters, I am very, um, you know, it's really a privilege. As I also reflected and I reflected on the school scenario, because in my professional life, I'm a teacher. And one of the things I observed, and this is also a source of encouragement to um, our, our young ladies. One of the things I observe is that the Muslims, I don't know if you see the Muslims, how they dress um, in, in the US. I don't think there are as many as they are here in Europe. But if you see how the Muslim dress, how do they dress? Do they put trousers on? No, they don't. Or do you call it pants, I think, Pastor? They don't. They don't put on pants. They wear their long dresses. And can anybody tell them to do otherwise? Can the authorities tell them to do otherwise? No, because it's their right it's to do so. And the other thing I observed, Pastor, um, you heard, um, was it Sanya, Sister Sanya, and somebody else um, said that one of the things they have learned from Daniel is about prayer. If you see those Muslims pray, they are dedicated. The youngsters, Pastor, I, in the schools that I work, during um, Ramadan, particularly in Ramadan, they will go aside in their lunchtime and then we go and pray uh the the, the the adults teachers there was a particular colleague i work in a school that particular colleague in lunchtime he would shut this classroom door and he would go to the back of this um science lab i'm a science teacher and he will pray put his back down on his brain and so i was really glad to hear um some of our youngsters saying the book of daniel has taught them how they need to pray more i pray the lord will put upon us a spirit of prayer this year. We will pray more. Hallelujah. And through Amen. our prayer, the Lord will deliver us from some of these things that so much entrap us. The Lord will help us all. Hallelujah. And so, Amen. Um, Pastor, it, it's really a privilege to share um, with our, our youngsters and to encourage them that you are not alone. You know, some of us as adults, we have gone to some of these challenges before, but one thing is certain. The Bible says the Lord will give us deliverance from them all. 
Let no one despise your youth, the Bible tells us. Let no one despise Paul. Uh, you know the Apostle Paul had a understudy called Timothy. And Paul wrote to Timothy in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12. Let no man despise your youth, but be an example to others in your conversation, in the way you conduct yourself, in your speech, what you say, what you do, should be an example. That is, you are shining your life for Christ so that others will see. I pray the Lord will strengthen you to do that in Jesus' name. Also, Amen. you might think, uh, you know, I know back in um, our country, Jamaica, one of the things, Pastor, um, you hear some of these people always say when you try to witness them, particularly um, the younger ones, they will say, um, you know, they are young, they need to enjoy life. Um, Christianity is yes. for old people. I don't know if Sister Sanya have heard that or Sister uh, Romian. She's still pretty young, but I don't know if she have heard that. But when I was growing up as a youngster in Jamaica, that's one of the things we heard. You, you know, youths weren't really interested in Christianity. They say that is for old people. But what does the Bible say? The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1, youth is the time to serve the Lord. In verse 13, he said, this is the conclusion. So this was some Solomon. He was a great king and he, and he was exposed to all sorts. We know that Solomon had so many wives and so many concubines. He was rich. He was wise. But yet, because he strayed from God, he was not able to do what God wanted him to do. And Solomon said in chapter 13, 12 rather, and verse 13, here, the conclusion of the whole matter. The old duty of man is to serve the Lord. May the Lord help you, young flesh, that you will not neglect your responsibility. You are strong. The Bible says, I write unto you because you are strong. And because you are strong, you will do exploits for God. Hallelujah. You will be strong both physically and in your mind that you will not be swayed to do the wrong things, but you will be firm in your resolve, in your determination, I will not sin against God. I will not do what my friends are doing. It is evil. I will not cheat. I will not lie. I will be um, forgiven. I will be respectful to my parents because it says in um, uh, Ephesians chapter 5 or 6 there about is that we, uh, when children obey their parents in the Lord, it is the right thing to do. So be respectful to your parents. Ephesians chapter, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1 onwards. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for it is the right thing to do. So obey your parents. Okay? They are not evil. Okay? They are not evil. They, they will, uh, as Christian parents, they will point in the right direction. And as you do that, the Lord will help you. Also, be forgiven. Okay? Be able to forgive one another. So if somebody did you wrong, be ready to forgive. Because the Lord tells us in the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6 rather, that we should always forgive those who are trespass against us. Because as we do so, the Lord also will forgive us. The Lord will strengthen you. I am encouraged Amen. tonight. I, Pastor, you can invite me back anytime. I'm happy to come and hear how the youths are doing. And I know the Lord will Amen. help them this year. This year, 2022, they will do much more for the Lord. I'm looking forward to meeting you all um, as I travel across the United States. And I am grateful for the opportunity God has given to me. I was once a youth like you. Pastor was once a youth like you. He has shared some of what he's been doing. And I know together, the Lord will help us also to guide you, uh, that you will continue to walk in truth and in righteousness all the days of your life. God bless you. God keep you. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Let us uh, thank our pastor by clapping to the Lord Jesus for the word of encouragement tonight. It was succinct and was powerful. The Lord bless you, sir. Thank you so much God for the word you. of encouragement to the youth. To us, we are blessed. I, yes, God I bless can, you so much. I can come back later when you finish, pastor, to pray with our youth if you desire for me to do so. Yes, yeah, sure, you will. You will. <laughs> God bless you. So thank you so much. So I just want to take some announcement before we take our closing prayers. So um, uh, for our next uh, month of this, month, um, this January, 
So we are um, our next uh, our assignment, our book reading will be Romans. So please, if you didn't get a journal, uh, not getting a journal yet, please get a journal. Don't write these things on a piece of paper. So you see, when we are recapping, you can easily go back to your notes and you can see, see the pattern, you can see everything. And also, you can always revisit it anytime and you see what you have learned when you've forgotten. So please get yourself a journal for this class and always write what you're reading. So for this uh, month, from now till we meet again in February uh, 13th, we're going to meet February 13th, please let us get a journal, study the book of Romans, write what you have gained from the book of Romans and any questions you may have and then be ready to share with us in class, okay? So get uh, a journal, write what you have gained and uh, your questions that you may have and be ready to share with us in class come February 13th, if Jesus tarries, all right? God bless you uh, as we do that. Please, let's start on time. Don't come and make excuses, okay? You wanna, we don't want to hear excuses this year. It's a year of greater service for the Lord a year of greater works for Jesus Christ. So please buckle up. Let's start early. And then remember our assignments for the year to do um, our prayers will be like 50 minutes of prayers every day. This is very easy to accomplish. You can, you see, you see the testimony of uh, Pastor was sharing with us today about the Muslim um, students in school and uh, colleagues, how they go out to pray. I can relate to this. When I was also working during you know, when it's time for them to pray, they don't care what job you're doing. They just take their mat and go to one corner and start praying. And like, it intimidated me then. I'm like, I can't, as a Christian, I can't even go like, you say, I want to go and take prayer time and pray. But look at these people who don't even know what they're doing. And they boldly stand there knocking their heads on the ground and not ashamed. You know, it was a great intimidation to me. I want that to challenge all of you. You know, let us boldly Pray, even in school, let people know you're praying. Go and take time out and pray. Say, while you're conversing with your friends, tell them it's your time to pray. You want to go and pray to the Lord. Daniel prayed three times in a day. He must have prayed morning, noon, and night. When Set your alarm for prayer time in the afternoon. When it's time you're discussing with your friends, having fun, whatever it is, tell them, oh, sorry, it's my time to pray. I want to go and pray. Go and take a quiet time in one corner and do your prayers. So if they want to work with that um. With that way, if you break it down, wake up early in the morning, you pray, um, what's the name, 25 minutes in the morning, you do uh, 25 minutes at night, and you do maybe 10 minutes uh, during the school hours or during the day, you've covered the 50 minutes, more than that. So you can break it down, maybe 20, 20, and then 10 in the day. So what, like I always tell you people, go ahead. The only way to go above the target, to make sure you, you're on target, is aim above the target, right? You want to cover one mile. Shoot so that you can go beyond one mile. So they give us 15 minutes. You can do 60 minutes. 20 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the afternoon, or 20 minutes in the afternoon, or 20 minutes at night. So you can do it. So make our time for prayer this year. And then uh, the, the messages. We have 70, 70 messages to listen. I don't want you to start counting the messages to watch at uh, your chapter meetings and your unit meetings. No, not just the message. That time you spend playing games, doing this, convert it to watching messages. You spend chatting with your friends, convert it to watching messages. If you only watch two messages in a week, that will give you a hundred and uh, four messages in a year. If you're only working, watching two in a week to yourself, you know, like I told you guys, I just I wake up in the morning and I start my messages. I'm you know getting every day. You no, know, that's what I start my day with. So you can form that habit where you find out the, you know, just two messages in a week for yourself personally. That will give you 104 in a week, in a year. You see, when you're doing that with that ratio, you will definitely surpass the, the, the target. So go with two messages in a week. So, and then the book readings. We have our book. We have to read. I posted this on our forums. We already have it in our forums. So you can go back to that and see it. We have to read the doctrine of restitution for your holiness and heaven. And then we have to read heart sanctification and holy living. Um, we have to read uh, raising up godly children for Jesus and also making your father and mother glad by your life. And we have to read um, Joseph the youth with the bright future testimony and also testimonies of men and angels on divine choice of Pastor Paul Rica. And we have to read the key of your life it's in your hands. Some of these books have already shared the PDF with us on the forum. Uh, we should, we have them on the forum, but please, if you still need any of these PDFs, 
let me know and we will get it across to you and then as we get the hard copies also we might, we'll make that available for those who need so please make sure you are studying this book the pdf will be a good deal for you which means you can study it when you're in school when you're in train going to work wherever you are you can always open up to it and study so please let's ensure that this year we finish our assignments. You know, the class does not afford us all the time to be able to, you know, do all the whole assignments. So we want to focus on the Bible readings, on the Bible studies. So that's what we treat here in the class. So for the books, and I trust if we have time, we might treat one or two books, you know, in, in, in the course of the year. But when we, that would be when we are true with our Bible uh, reading, uh, which is uh, six Bible readings from Romans to Hebrew. And the Lord bless us this year. I know that all of us, we do better. So at the end of this year, we have great testimonies. We can share how much God has done to us this year in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you for all you're doing, for living for God, for those wonderful testimonies that touched our lives tonight and while you are standing out and shining for God, even in your schools. Keep it up. The Lord bless you. You will not lose your reward in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Pastor. Thank you. I'm handing back over to you now to round up for us in praise and then close. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor. And I thank the Lord for your life as well and for um, leading our youth. I know the Lord will also encourage you this year to do even more for them as you work Amen. for the Lord and as he give you divine ideas to help our youngsters to grow and to mature in the things of the Lord. God bless you, sir. I live for Jesus day after day. I live for Jesus. How come what may be spirit? I will obey. I live for Jesus day after day. I live for Jesus day after day. I live for Jesus. Oh, come what may come, Holy Spirit. I will obey, I will obey, I live for Jesus day after day. Hallelujah. I want us, uh, youths, to just open up our mouths and to thank God for this first meeting uh, for the year 2022. Thank God for what you have learned in 2021. And let's commit this year to the Lord in prayer. Telling the Lord that you're going to do more for him. Let us pray. Father, in the name Mighty of Jesus, God, 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 God. we thank you for this, our first Please meeting of the Lord, year 2022. Father, we thank you for the testimonies and that that you have been able to do for us in the year 2021. Father, we thank you for what we have learned studying the book of Daniel to Malachi. Father, I pray that as we hide your words in our hearts, we will not sin against you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for our teacher, Pastor, and for who you've been using him to guide us, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for those things. And we know that this year, 2022, we are committing ourselves to do more for you. We are determined in our minds, Lord Jesus, that we will walk with you all the days of our life. Heavenly Father, we give you praise. For in Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Now I will pray for our youth. Amen. One of my first prayer is that we're going to pray. I'm going to pray for us youth that the Lord will give us a determined mind. A determined Amen. mind. The Bible tells us in the book of Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 that uh, Daniel had a determined mind. He made up his mind. And so my prayer now is that the Lord will give you that strong determination to walk with him. It doesn't matter what comes me, as the song says, we will walk with him. Father, I commit these youths to you. And in the year 2022, we are committing, Father, I'm committing them to you that they are now saying, Lord, I'm going to walk with you. I'm determined in my mind as Daniel that I will not defile myself. 
I will not succumb yes, yes. to the gamings. I will not succumb to surfing on the internet and going on websites I'm not supposed to go that does not glorify you. Lord, I'm committing this year that I will not waste my time playing games when I should be studying the word of God or engage with learning my schoolwork. Father, I am determined this year that I will be obedient to my parents. I will be obedient to your word. I am determined this year that I will forgive each other because this is your word Amen. in the book of Matthew chapter 6 and elsewhere. Father, I am declaring this year that as a child of God, my light will shine for you. My light will shine in my home. My light will shine at school. Amen. My light will shine Amen. in my community in the name of Amen. Jesus. Father, Amen. and we give you praise. Lord Jesus, I am also praying for our youth that according to your word in the book of James chapter 4, that they will not love the things of the world, the things of the world which are so attractive, the things of the world which can bring pain and misery. But Lord, I am praying for these youths in North America that they will have a determined mind to say, no, I know to sin. No to lust, no to fornication, no to uh, masturbation, no to pornography, no to lying, no to stealing. Father, they will say no, because your word declares that as a young man, as a young woman, as a God, child of God, we will not defile ourselves. And so, Father, I pray now that you will let them be focused on you. And not the things of the world. Because you said that if we love the things of the world, we are an enemy of God. And I pray, Lord, that any youth here in North America, they will not become your enemy. But they will become your Amen. friend. In the name Amen. of Jesus. And Lord, as Amen. you strengthen them. As you give them a strong mind. As you gave those three Hebrew boys and Daniel. As you give them a strong mind as you did Esther. So that she was a queen and, and she was able to make requests of the king and the Lord be through prayer and fasting granted unto her a request so she was able to save her people, the Jews. Father, in the name of Jesus, put upon our young son a determined mind. Put upon our young son an excellent spirit. They will have excellence in their schoolwork. They will have excellence wherever they go. Lord, let your beauty be seen in them. Our young ladies, Father, they will not need to put on makeup. They will not think because of the fashion of the world. They have to conform to that because you said uh, we need to transform our minds. And Father, we pray that the word of God renew us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank Amen. you. And so, Lord, I thank commit you, Lord. them to you this year. I commit that they will walk in truth. They will walk in righteousness. And like the psalmist who Amen. says in the book of Psalm 101, that we will not put anything which is wicked before our faces. You said, we will not, my eyes shall not, uh, I will behave, verse 2 of Psalm 101, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, yes, when thou will come unto me, I will walk with my house with a perfect heart. I will set Amen. no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside, it shall not cleave to me. And so, Lord, I commit them to you. They will walk in truth. They will walk in righteousness. Father, Amen. they will honor you in all that they do. And Lord, according to your word, the excellent spirit of God, Daniel, Lord, it will be upon them. Though that and the grace that was upon Esther will be upon our young ladies. Lord, Amen. deliver them from the trappings of this world and set them free as they live for you each day. Bless Amen. them, Jesus. Protect them. Yes, Cover them under your blood. Provide for their homes, Lord Jesus, their parents, so that they too will enjoy good of the land. We bless you and we give you thanks. For in Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. 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 God bless, God bless you, Amen. Pastor. God. Thank you for the support, um, Sister Taki, for supporting our youth as well. I know the Lord will put upon yourselves more grace, divine ideas to institute as we move the youth forward in this year, 2022. We will do more for Lord Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. God bless you. Hurimo is a non-denominational ministry given to the propagation of God's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, conferences, and the production and spread of holiness literature and materials. Pastor Paul Ricke has been mandated to raise up this great work as the international director, an anointed teacher of holiness with divine inspiration. He is the author of over 30 Christian books and many hundreds of recorded messages that can be found on the YouTube channel. Connect with us on YouTube and Facebook. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide Horimo is promoting biblical truth, righteousness, and holiness. Please join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time with the Zoom meeting ID 425-964-7780 or every Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, ID 989-988-2681. To hear the undiluted word of God from Pastor Paul Ricker, the International Director of Horimo. The address of Horimo North America is 3776 Piney Mountain Road, Walnut Cove, North Carolina, 27052. You can telephone us on 336-251-4626 or email us at horimona at gmail.com. You can also visit the website at www.horimona.org. Welcome to Holiness Revival Movement, promoting holiness and righteousness worldwide.